It's a simple goal, really. Every year around Christmas, count every bird in a 15-mile diameter circle. Do this every year to monitor changes and contribute to science. But there's a catch. You must do this in a single 24-hour period, scheduled weeks in advance, regardless of the weather. So how does one little count in Texas find more species than any of the more than 2,000 count circles in North America? Almost every single year. So it's the, it's the, the thrill of the hunt. We always talk about our dream birds. What are we going to get today? What are we going to get today? You won't believe what they found this year. Every year is a treasure hunt. You don't know what it's going to be this year. It'll be different from last year. It's fun. It's a community event. It's, it's a really big event in Matagorda County. I remember the first time I heard about it, there was something like only 10 or 20 people on the count, and yet they broke 200. This very few people saw a whole lot of different species of birds and a whole lot of number. That, that wakes up the birding community. Uh, and then just getting caught up in the whole excitement of, of, of the thing, that doing that, you know, just that all out effort from 12.01 till, you know, five in, in the afternoon, getting to do that with a lot of great people, uh, you know, that's just icing on the cake. We have a wonderful group of birders to come, and of course, if it wouldn't be for the birders, we would certainly not get the amount of birds that we get. We have people from Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, Houston. There are no bad folks that come to Matagorda County with the birding community. These are many of them professionals, all of them committed. The list of, uh, the list of people is a who's who of, of Texas birding. There's no question about it. Everybody that I know, you know, basically all the good birders participate in the Mad Island Count. So I, I think that actually leads to the, lends well to the credibility of all the reports. If it even looks like a trail, we'll get out and we'll go down it. We'll climb up on boat docks, little observation docks, try everything we can think of. And if there's any fallen leaves, believe me, I stomp around for woodcocks. <laughs> yeah, we work hard. We work hard at it. The success of the count is not measured by how many species you personally get during the section, but how well you comb through special habitat and get like the rarer, rarer birds of your area. So you have to have a good knowledge of not just the birds, but also the vegetation, the preferences, where the birds like to be and like to need to know what they sound like. So the fact that you have to really comb the area and get the rare ones out there, that's a challenge and that's part of the fun of it. But I think we have a wonderful support system. A lot of folks, if they don't get out there and bird, they're supporting us with uh, funds or in-kind work. I knew uh, uh, Jim Bergen before the Christmas Bergen, as I knew Brent as well, uh, before the uh, Mad Island started. But uh, and those two guys working together, of course, you know, creates a, an irresistible attraction to come and join the, in the fun because y you know they knew what they were talking about when they were discussing the beauty and wonderment of Mad Island itself. Obviously, without those two guys, it wouldn't have happened. The novel experience at a first count was because nobody knew much about Matt Allen. At the time, the Freeport was the biggest count in Texas. It had 150 to 200 participants. We were just hoping to get a few dozen. Uh, we had good participation from the locals. Uh, David and Marilyn Sitz helped coordinating, Ural Donahue, Julia Hill, a number of the local birders, you know, uh, definitely helped coordinate the initial count. My recollection is, is Brent Ortego and I were working at Matt Island, the whole Matt Island Marsh complex. Obviously Brent was focused on the uh, wildlife management area portion and, and of course I was focused on the Nature Conservancy property. And we had kind of started about the same time. Uh, obviously Brent was very active in the Christmas bird count world and I think one day we were talking about the uh, 
the, uh, the count at uh, Freeport and uh, kind of looking at the numbers and seeing the number of species that uh, the Freeport count had been uh, generating, which was really impressive. Uh, and we kind of, from there, I think uh, Brent said, well, why can't we go ahead and think about something from Matt Island? Uh, we knew we had a diversity of habitat types. Uh, our management and our restoration work was really progressing rapidly, which we thought was definitely just a harbinger of being able to make the area even more important for, for birds. And uh, so that started it. We just kind of uh, wanted to reach out to the local community in a better way, in a more hands-on way. You know, the local residents did a, a very good job, particularly Maryland, since that's the person I dealt with mostly. And Miss Sitz, when she sets her mind to things, they get done, look at their business. That's a, that's a, a true testament to her and David's hard work. And um, the bird count was just the same. You know, they made the, uh, the arrangements. They found the Wadsworth Center. They got permission to use it. Uh, they got sponsorship. So they talked to the uh, industrial plants. They talked to the local businesses. And over the years, we've had dozens of local businesses contribute. Some a very small amount, some a significant amount. Actually, David Sitz uh, approached us about get it, gaining access to the property. You know, being in the chemical industry, um, we feel that it's important to be a good neighbor as well and uh, also protect the environment. And so when we were approached about gaining access for for the bird count, we thought it was a great fit. Uh, the Lindell property is about 2,000 acres in total. Within that uh, 2,000 acres, there's about 500 acres of farmland. So it's open fields uh, when they don't farm. And then we have uh, probably on the order of 800 acres of a wooded area along the river. Uh, we have two miles of river frontage. So uh, quite a diverse habitat, and I think that's uh, what makes the property, property interesting. And also, uh, you know, the large trees along the river provide an opportunity for uh, forest species. And through the years, we've uh, picked up Swainson's warblers. This year, I got a morning warbler, uh, which was exciting. Uh, we picked up blue, blue grosbeaks. Um, of course, painted buntings and indigo buntings are, are not unusual to, to get. Marilyn Sitz asked me to ask my mother if we could go birding on the Pitchfork Ranch because my mother had not let anybody bird on there for a long time. I don't know, maybe not ever. And so um, I asked her and she said, well, if you're going to go with them, then okay. The, the unique thing about that particular section is that it's got a, uh, about a thousand acres of prairie and then another thousand acres of more wooded area and, it, and we have riverfront. So you get a wide variety of birds there. I think the most we ever counted was about 125 species. The health of the bird population, to me, really is an indicator of how healthy your land is. Okay, my daughter, Karen McBride, is the leader of the River Ranches section. That's private ranches that we have permission to bird on. Uh, mainly ours is George Harrison's ranch. He and his wife are very cooperative and interested in all of this, and they come to our countdown dinner and he's always hoping that we will find a rare bird that nobody else finds. And one year he created wetlands for us. He didn't have any on his ranch. So that helped us get a lot more birds. And um, we just bird all day. We usually get 100 species. River Ranches is great because it has a wooded area in the north on the Harrison Ranch. And then there are sections in the south that are more water birds and boggy and uh, low. So um, it has a lot of diverse habitat. And uh, we get all the, the woods birds at the north. And we have a team that walks, just walks through the woods. They do it all day long and they're strong. 
and it takes strength to do that. Um, and then in the south, we pretty much drive around between the little duck ponds and, the, and look at water birds and try not to scare them away because ducks are so f skitterish. Uh, some interesting properties, so like you go down to the river ranches, uh, you have George Harrison, Linda Joyce Stovall, and also the uh, heirs of the Pitchfork Ranch. They have properties down there along the river. And the only way you get to see them is through the Christmas bird count. It's nice forested areas, which uh, in this part of the state, there's not many places which is forested. So they have nice forested river bottoms. They have some agricultural pastures there. They have some wetlands developed for waterfowl. And it has quite a bit of diversity. Uh, they support large numbers of eagles. Down the road uh, from this uh, river ranch is we have the Von Gotten uh, Ranch, which is, it's managed mostly for waterfowl, uh, possibly some of it for fish, but they have a whole series of wetlands that our group out of uh, Rockport uh, with Brian Rowex's team get to visit every year, and it's, it's a very productive <coughs> Area. We've had the same group that comes to us every year. Braun Rorix from Rockport is our group leader for our section for Von Gonten Ranch. Uh, they're a very knowledgeable group. They definitely know their birds. Uh, they usually know what it is when they hear it before they even see it. And uh, it's really interesting to watch and someone who's an expert in their field like that to be able to identify something uh, that can fly so quickly and uh, pass by and instantly know without a doubt, you know, what that species is. Uh, the bird count for us and for me personally is kind of a progress report for me, how I and how we've managed the land for that year. Uh, the Nature Conservancy section, uh, I'm biased, but it's great. Uh, it, uh, you know, beautiful grassland, uh, marshland, uh, the, uh, the Shell Ridge uh, uh, forest there along the intercoastal. Uh, it's really great diversity and uh, because of the habitat, there's a lot of target birds uh, for the count, uh, particularly grassland, marsh birds, uh, things like yellow rails and black rails that a uh, few of the other sections get. Uh, really, it starts at 12.01 uh, when we have people uh, going out trying to find owls, uh, try to find uh, the rails out in the marsh. It's a lot of excitement. It's a lot of riding around in circles. It's there's water driving through a marsh. So it's a really fun experience and it's fun to have different levels of excitement on that as well. People who are entertained by the experience to be there are other people who really want to see a black rail or a yellow rail and so all of those varying levels of experience being involved at the same time is a lot of fun. It was really exciting. We have this fantastic piece of property that has, you know, it's an old sulfur mining town and it's, it's extremely large and there's tremendous um, variety and diversity of habitats. So we've got scrub, we've got woodland, we've got, you know, a big lake. And so we're really, really grateful for the landowners for giving us permission for it. Um, we also bird along the intercoastal canal as well. And then there's another piece of private property that we um, also bird um, that's really fantastic, which is where we get our, our longbill thrasher. We, for over 20 years, have been the, per the group that always that brings that to the count. I'm really grateful for the people that make the count special for me. And um, that begins with uh, Donner Delt, who's been my contact for the old Gulf for these last, I hate keep saying it, but 20 years or so. Um, and Bill Anderson, uh, before that it was his father, who was, you know, the contact who's, who's also passed away. Um, but they've, you know, been our contacts who have given us permission for, for this um, beautiful day that we get to spend every December um, out in the field, feeling like children in a playground. Uh, my first boat captain, uh, the section I do is East Matagorda Bay, and you need a boat to get around East Matagorda Bay, uh, look for deep water birds, also look for marsh birds. My first boat captain was David Sitz, and uh, we went for a number of years. El Capitan and me, we, we covered East Matagorda Bay every year, and we, we added additional boat operators. Uh, James Arnold and his brother Ozzie stepped in after David, 
And they've been doing it for quite a few years. And when you get those two characters on a boat, it's an entertaining day. Whew, it's crazy. The one thing that's predictable is that the weather will be unpredictable during that count day. So I've had the craziest conditions. Well, everybody has, but operating a boat is a lot different. So um, we've had heavy fog where we wouldn't be able to go out in the boat for several hours. Uh, we had to wait for the fog to clear. You know, very calm conditions. Other times, it's extremely windy, um, spitting rain, um, cold. Sometimes it's uh, very high tides, which it affects my bird count, my bird area, the section I survey, because if the high, tides are high, I see very few shore, shore birds. If it's low, then uh, usually the areas are loaded with shore birds. So um, it's always unpredictable. It's pretty monotonous. I mean, <laughs> we, we, it's mostly marsh. Uh, I mean, almost all the way out, you know. Um, so all the little bits of woods and stuff that we do have are really important for the variety, if you want to, you know. But the thing about those little bits of woods, since we're the first woods over the open water, you know, as, as from the, uh, a lot of times we get birds trapped there that aren't trapped further inland, you know. And so even though it's outbound and it's winter, you know, they're still trapped there and they haven't left. And so we get some weird stuff and we have had weird stuff in the woods. I am on the uh, little pier at the jetty of the mouth of the Colorado River. Um, there is um, a jetty going out and the pier has a, um, a short bridge elevated and curved higher in the middle point, um, which is the ideal place to be birding. We also look, try to, um, if we see any shrimp boats out there, focus the scope on those, see what's flying around the shrimp boats. Like that, I have gotten several birds, good birds for the count, Jaegers, boobies. So that's um, a frigate bird, which was the first for the count. That's uh, some of the strategies that I employ there. My first job now at the South Texas nuclear plant and under the leadership of Bill Baker is, uh, is to be under the bridge at sunrise and be the first person to uh, catch the cave swallows as they leave just before sunrise. And usually they get up a little earlier than they'd like to because I want to see them and get them out from under the bridge so I can count them and then go on to the next place. But, uh, and then we generally meet up and make sure get our safety lesson for the, you know, and our security lesson for going in the South Texas plant area because it is not an area you just take for granted. You have to observe the rules in there and they have to know who you are and, and that sort of thing. Uh, if you've had some legal issues, you probably won't be allowed on site. So we have a pretty clean group that, that bird that area. But uh, it is unique and uh, it's interesting. We have wonderful diverse habitats on that site. We've seen a lot of what I would consider rare birds on our property in the past. Weather patterns drive that. Uh, Thick-billed kingbird is a good example of a rare bird we've had. Uh, that, actually, that brings to mind one complaint I have about Mad Island. We have too many rare birds. I have to write up three or four species every year. And uh, that's the only thing I have to complain about that. So some of the birds that we've seen within the Mad Island Western Road section um, include things like prairie falcon and mountain plover. And those birds, they prefer habitat with basically flat ground. So that's why Western Roads can be good for those kinds of birds because it's plowed ground, it's really short grass on the turf farms, and since that kind of habitat is pretty much only found in the Western Road section, uh, we've been privileged to find the mountain plover and the long spur and the prairie falcon in that kind of habitat. Uh, other interesting birds include the buff-breasted sandpiper, which we found in our section in uh, 2015. There's, there's certain birds that you find in town, and that's my target birds. I mean, I may, uh, spend a long time looking for one species because, uh, and, and it's a common species that, uh, you know, you're going to see it around your house, but it's not a species that other people are going to find out in the prairie or on the bay. 
uh, or in, in the deep woods, they're not going to be there. They're going to be in town. And because I did the town area, I talked people into putting up feeders and uh, visited with them. And there were people who, who I talked to about getting permission to, to get on their land, uh, the Andersons uh, in particular. And uh, his wife uh, inherited uh, a lot of land down there, uh, Battle Island Ranch. And uh, so, you know, I would go visit with them. I'd spend, you know, I might spend five or six hours talking to them beforehand, you know, when I was getting permission to get on their land. And then I'd always go by and see them. I've been trying to work with the hummingbird feeder people in my zone because there's enough people, people there are several people that have hummingbird feeders. And so I'd actually even arranged a, a session for their garden club, the Matagorda Garden Club. So we should have even more hummingbird feeders coming up in 2017 for actually Matagorda potentially and the Selkirk Island area, which is Selkirk Island is just up the river a few miles from the town of Matagorda. It's not very far. Roy and Royce Poinsett own that property. It's actually property uh, that's part of the Pabst family. If you remember Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer, uh, that is a good section of the bottomland. So there's a residential area right along the river, and then there's this old oxbow area that's really moist and has a lot of the good birds, and that's a private ranch. Um, we have to get there before daylight because one of the specialty birds that we're in charge of getting is American woodcock, and right at dawn they, um, they'll fly around. So we have to be there for that to get them. One time we found an oven bird in there and we found uh, yellow-breasted chat a couple of times and probably some other stuff. Uh, oh, and then the, the best bird that we had in that section was uh, a blue-winged warbler one year. In 2017, we found the bird of the count and the Cadian flycatcher uh, in that same area. And uh, just we make sure we're done by about five so we can get back for the dinner. I look forward to, to, to it every year. It's, it's one of the highlights of the count. And even though, you know, after a day of being out there, everybody is tired, you just get a new dose of adrenaline when you go to the count and see all the muddy, happy, tired people, and so many that I haven't seen in a year. We have an appreciation dinner for the burgers that are involved in the bird count and recently uh, my daughter Becca has seen to the menu for the banquet. Uh, my wife sees that we get sponsors that furnish money that part of pays for the meal and we set up in Wadsworth, Texas where hopefully most of the hundred plus burgers meet for the count. And of course the dinner is fabulous. Uh, everybody always says they do the Mad Island count just for the dinner because the food is so good. And you get a t-shirt with the bird from last year so it's just really it's really a fun fun time. And we get a wonderful t-shirt that we're able to to wear through the year and uh, the sponsors names are on there and I know they upgrade the t-shirts more recently by putting a good looking picture of the of the bird of the year from the previous year. Uh, uh, sadly they didn't do it for my thick billed kingbird but that'll be okay. I know that when we came back to the Countdown dinner uh, they had the shirts that they had presented and for a number of years they had been photographs and one year they did a painting of McGilbrey's Warbler and I thought wow that'd be kind of fun to uh, be a part of that I mean I've, I've done some artwork I've uh, been doing it since I was a little kid I'm not a trained artist uh, but I thought gee uh, if Brent would be amenable to that uh, I think it'd be cool to get my some of my artwork on a shirt uh, Brent was great he was gracious about it uh, he said sure and I started doing some paintings just for the count and uh, for the last few years I've been very fortunate to have everybody like what I've done enough that uh, they invited me to do it the following year so I've been thrilled. My enjoyment is when I walk into the Wadsworth Community Center and have a hundred birds that just finished a day birding all excited about the day they just experienced. To me 
that is the greatest pleasure I get. You walk into the room, 125 friends, they all had a good day, they're all happy, I'm happy. It's just exciting, then you go to the countdown, what did we get? Why are they so excited about it? And you go through the list and you get people come up and talk about the bird they got. It's special. Now it's time to you know, who, see who has the bragging rights on finding the best bird, uh, see what other people have turned up, if anything really rare has been you know, turned up. And you know, so there's always suspense on where you're gonna end up. To be able to walk up and talk about your good birds or at least um, share them the oohs and ahs and the, boy, I don't know if I believe that one, or wow, that's a great bird, uh, are always fun to hear. We were doing a section at Matagorda, and we had a guy in there, uh, all I can remember his name was Chuck, it was a friend of a friend, and we saw a road runner. Now they're, they're shown in the book to be here, but that's the first one we had seen. So nobody else called out a road runner, and, Brent Ortego said, well, you'll have to write that up, Francine. And I said, Brent, how can you ha not see a roadrunner <laughs> with a long neck and a long tail and the stripes? He said, oh, well, forget it. Every Christmas bird counts. I remind everybody that sometime in the afternoon, I'm going to get a phone call from Brent. You know, and I'm there listening, and of course, in my head, I'm thinking, Brent, we got it under control. It's okay. Those of us who've been involved for a long time know what our targets are. Brent will remind us. Now, here's what you need to look for. So, Brent's a guy that, you know, he's got a he, he's got a target, and uh, it's fun to hit Brent's targets. Well, uh, in, in the future, you know, as long as our, our Brent, our leader, is there, uh, I can't imagine any count in the no entire nation being better coordinated, better run, better data, use of people, the landowners and the sponsors and, and everything. I, I suspect there may be a couple of Christmas bird counts around the nation that might approach this, but I don't think it's possible for there to be a better one than the way uh, Mad Island is organized and, and the way the whole community is behind it. Uh, just to have <laughs> bird watchers running free all over ranches and all over uh, communities We're looking at everybody's yards and hummingbird feeders or uh, or wandering all over a nuclear plant. I mean, you know, where else does that happen? I, I don't know. Texas is pretty big, uh, but it's pretty big hearted when it comes to this kind of stuff. So uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty uh, unsurpassed Christmas count in more ways than just the number of birds. We're proud that that we can do this and we can do it in a big way. If you're a birder in the United States of America and beyond, frankly, if you're an international birder and you've not been to the Matagorda County Christmas Bird Count at Matt Allen Slough, you're missing out. And it's more successful than we ever dreamed. We just hope we're, we're able to be mentioned in the same conversation with the top counts in the nation. We knew we had special property, but we did not predict the diversity we would eventually find in Matagorda County and the great support we got from the landowners and the community and all you birders that came out to join us and enjoy the resources we have here. Looking forward to another 25 years and continued success with your support. Thank you. Planning on being there. Hope to see you.